morning from a cypress forest. Um, what I'd like to talk to you about today is exposure for landscape photography. So let me just kind of set that up. Um, I, I particularly love to go out early in the morning or late in the evening when the sun is starting to set or in the morning when the sun is, is rising. And I love to get those shots with the sun behind me and, uh, and I have a foreground with some detail in it and I have the sky in the background. That's a typical landscape setup. And one of the issues with that is that you're trying to get the right exposure so you can maintain the detail in that foreground, but you're not wanting to blow out that brighter sky. So, um, so that's kind of what I'm gonna talk about today is how I can do that with just one shot most of the time. So before I explain to you how I do that, let's first talk about something called dynamic range because you do need to understand that concept. So think of dynamic range as just the range of darks to brights. So if you look at a scene in front of you, you've got some bright areas, you got some dark areas. The darker the darks and the brighter the brights, the greater is the dynamic range. Now, cameras come with a dynamic range capability. In other words, if you're looking at a scene that it has a high contrast or a high dynamic range, some cameras can do very well with that. Other cameras are going to be more limited in their ability to capture that dynamic range. Despite their limitations, not being as good as the human eye, cameras can do quite well. And I find that if I use the histogram on my camera, I can take advantage of its ability to capture a wide dynamic range and get the correct exposure with just one shot. All right, so what is the histogram? So basically the histogram is the graphic of dynamic range. So it is showing you the dark areas on the left side and the bright areas on the right side of the graph. Your camera offers you a histogram and it can do it one of two ways. Either way, what you're looking at when you're looking at that histogram is the camera's exposure on a scene. So if the camera exposes correctly, right, you're gonna have all of your pixel data, that's all of the light that is being analyzed by your camera, is going to fall within the confines of that graph, of that histogram. In other words, you're not losing any data to the left or to the right. So, and we call that clipping when that happens. So for instance, if you underexpose the scene too much, you're gonna find that a lot of the data is gonna get pushed over to the left side. That means you're clipping the dark areas. You're gonna lose that detail in the dark areas. Opposite of that is when you clip the bright areas. Uh, if you clip the bright areas, you're gonna see more data pushed over to the right side. Now, as I said, there are two ways that your camera will show you the histogram. If you have an older model camera, it is likely that the only way you're going to see the histogram will be after you take the shot. Nowadays, more cameras are coming out with live view histograms. Your camera might have live view, but it might not offer you a live view histogram. So if you do have live view and you do have the option of looking at the histogram, that means that you're going to be able to evaluate your scene using the histogram before you take the shot. Even better, you are going to be able to see how changing the exposure settings affects that histogram. If your camera does not offer you live view histogram, that's okay because you can still do what I'm doing here. You're just going to have to take a shot, look at the histogram, and then make adjustments accordingly. So how do I do this? Okay, number one, I use evaluative metering. That's also called multi-segment or matrix metering. What that means is when you go into your meter mode menu and you set it to that setting, evaluative or whatever it's called, that means that the camera is going to expose for the entire scene. It's going to be looking at the bright areas, it's going to be looking at the dark areas, and it's just going to come up with some kind of analysis of that to allow you to set the exposure. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to compose the image, 
and then I'm going to look at the live view histogram. I'm fortunate enough that I can see the histogram in my viewfinder as well as the back panel. Whichever one I'm looking at, I want to see that histogram. Now, if you don't have live view histogram, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to look at your camera's meter through the viewfinder. And as you're looking through the viewfinder, notice the meter. It can be either vertically oriented or horizontally oriented. If you're not up to par with that camera meter, you need to check out one of my previous videos about it. But for a scene like what we're talking about, I would start by putting the exposure right down the middle. So that means the exposure is set at zero. Take a shot, then consult your histogram, and from there you're going to make adjustments. So whether it's live view histogram or it's after the shot histogram, what you want to do is you want to pay attention to the dark areas in the graph. So you're looking at the left side of the histogram and you want to push the exposure to the left just far enough that all of the data stay within the histogram. So you're not clipping any of the darks, but you're getting them as close to the left as you can comfortably without losing any of the dark data. But take a look at what's happening to the brighter pixel area on your histogram. That should also be further to the left. So there's no risk of overexposing the brighter sky. Take your shot and then let's see what it looks like. And then if you feel like you need to adjust it, go ahead and adjust. Now, when you review that image, you're going to look at it and think the foreground is too dark. But don't worry, you haven't lost any of your pixel data. You have everything to work with when you bring that image into your editing software. So I bring my image into Camera Raw. If you bring yours into Lightroom, it's going to be the same thing here. All I do is I take the shadows and I take the slider and move it over to the brighter area and that's going to bring back those details in that foreground. Okay, so in summary, to get that one shot exposure, so where you have a landscape with a foreground and a brighter background, okay, you're going to use evaluative metering or multi-segment metering or matrix metering, depending on what your camera calls it, and you're going to allow the camera to meter for the whole scene. Then you're going to consult your histogram either before you take the shot or after you take the shot. As far as the histogram goes, you're going to avoid clipping the brights and the darks, and you're going to expose to the left as much as you can without clipping those dark areas. Then you're going to go into your editing program and you're going to bring back the detail in that foreground by just brightening the shadows. That's it. Thanks for looking on. See you next time.